your consideration this morning. You know that in our in our battlefield, this uh, fight for the faith in which we are. We have this mass today of the commemoration of the mass of the Lady of Perpetual Help, and the church says that we, we we that those in need call to the mother for help. We're looking for our mother to help us. And there's a few considerations. We know that at the end of the end of a war, at the end of a time of struggle, that there's when we're in the last state, we call for our mother for help. When we do call for our mother for help in our last state, we also call our mother for help when our first state. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end of all things. He is the creator and he is the judge. So he is the Alpha who created us. He is the Omega who shall judge us. He is the beginning that is underneath us and sustains us. And he is the end to which we are all directed to be in the kingdom of heaven with. And what about the Holy Mother? We all know that the time of great need, like it says in the Holy, in the, the Apollock of the Mass today, when the greatest of need, when all else help fails, the final call is for the help of our mother. The soldier dying in the battlefield, when all else fails, he calls for a mother. But if we go back to the very beginning, we also call for the mother. Then a child is born, what is his first knowledge? It is a knowledge of his mother. And after he knows the mother, then he knows other things. Then he knows all else. And so whenever, the, the, this is the reason why when he comes to the very end of his life, when he was at the very beginning, when he needed life, when he needed sustenance, when he needed, he needed his, his, uh, his daily bread, he called for his mother and she provided it. The bread was gotten by the father, the bread was grown by the father, but the bread was given by the mother to the child. And he, she, he is close to the bread because it comes from the mother. And so that we must remember that our Holy Mother, God made sure that in the work of salvation, that the Mother be essential to our salvation. Not only does she do the work as this curse of crushing the head of the serpent, she does crush the head of the serpent because after all, the devil used the woman to deceive man. So therefore Christ says to the devil, I will use woman to destroy Satan. I will use the Mother to destroy Satan. So the mother does destroy Satan. And the mother also is after not only destroying Satan, the mother also uh, provides for us at the end our final help. But what about in between? Whenever there is any need, whenever there is any, any desire or help, we call upon the mother. The mother is the one that provides for us. And remember that the, 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 whenever the, we, must, we must develop a habit of calling upon the mother and what is it that she gives to us? Why does the mother feed us? We're now in a great crisis and at the very end of the crisis the devil is going to come and attack and try to drag us down to the kingdom of hell and drag us away from the church. Who is going to survive? Who is going to make it through? And that is only those that have an actual love of the mother. We must love the Blessed Virgin Mary, we must love our mother. The love of the mother is essential. And what does this love of the mother give us? The Blessed Virgin Mary only loves one, and that is her son. And when she looks at us, it's something like we talk about in heaven, we speak of morning knowledge and evening knowledge. We say when the saint goes to heaven, the saint has morning knowledge by which she sees the sun brightly. And as evening knowledge, by which he sees other things from the light and, and reflection of the sun that is less bright. By the evening knowledge, the saints know everything that happens in history. And they know all the things that happen in their lives. And they know all the mysteries of salvation, like a reflection of looking at God. And then by the morning knowledge, they see God face to face. But what is our morning knowledge and our evening knowledge? In the morning knowledge, we see God. In the evening knowledge, we see things through Him. Now the Blessed Virgin Mary has morning knowledge. The Blessed Virgin Mary sees only one thing. She sees only one, one man that she loves with all of her being, and she is the mother of, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ, the mother of God. She is the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
who is the second person of the Trinity, the mother of our Lord, who is true man and perfect man. And by the reflection, she sees the rest of humanity and she sees all of us. And wherever there is a stain, wherever there is imperfection, her heart is driven to wipe it out. Now, what is the most important thing she's going to wipe out in us? That is, she's going to wipe out, of course, error and heresy in our minds. But what is she out to wipe up? A mother wants to clean the heart. The mother's primary duty is to clean the heart. And we will discover when the great battle comes, there will be those that know the truth. All the devils know the truth, and the saints know the truth. The only ones that don't know the truth are the mediocre souls in between. All the most wicked ones know the truth, and all the most holy ones know the truth. Only the ones that are in between are not the ones who do not know the truth. But who are the ones who are going to survive in the great fight? Those that love the truth. That is why it says in the sacred scripture that our St. Paul tells us that those who desire his coming are going to have a reward. Those who desire his coming, that is who love his coming. Our Lord Jesus Christ, will make, uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary, will make sure that we maintain the truth in our hearts. We're fighting now against the great error of, of modernism. We're fighting against the great, the great heresies of our times. And then our fight against modernism and our fight against the great heresies of our time, how do we maintain the truth? Only by a deep love of the truth. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, I am the truth. The devil knew he was the truth. And he told his apostles he was the truth. What made the apostles different from the devils? What made the apostles different from the heretics, of the, of the great, greatest of the heretics, and from the Satanists? The only thing that made the apostles different is that they not only knew the truth, but they loved the truth. We must love the truth. It is not enough for us to have truth. It is not enough for us to connect to truth. We must love the truth. And those who love the truth, these ones, the Blessed Virgin Mary, will be near in the time of crisis. She wants to train us to love the truth. Let us love the truth above all things, and the love of truth will be, will, and then truth will be protected in us by she who protects that love of the truth. At the very beginning, the Blessed Virgin Mary is like a mother of the, as a child. When we were children, she feeds us every day. She holds us in her arms. He takes care of all of our, of, of our movements and all of our necessities. And therefore, the closer that we are to a child, the more we are in the hand in her arms. The more we are like unto adult, the further we are away from her arms. And that's one reason why our Lord Jesus Christ said, unless you become as a little child, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. And who can have childhood without a mother? How can there be childhood without the mother in every part of our lives? Everything that's in our hearts, we tell to our mother. Every action we do in the presence of our mother. Everything we eat comes from the hands of our mother. Every direction is, comes from the hands of our mother. Even when our father tells us to do something, it's the mother that gives us the strength and the wisdom to be able to do it. And so remember the Blessed Virgin Mary is not only there at the end of the fight when the soldiers die on the battlefield. She's not only there to crush the head of the serpent at the end of the great war that is happening between heaven and hell. But she is there at every single stage. Her son is the Alpha and the Omega. And she's always connected to him at each stage. And therefore, she's always close to the Alpha. And she's always close to the Omega. She's always close to the beginning. And she's always close to the end. Which is why we read very often in the Mass of the Blessed Virgin Mary that before the heavens were made, I, before the heavens, I was made. Before the heavens, in the very beginning, she is in the mind of God. And that when, when the Lord Jesus Christ, when God the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost made the Son, when they made the stars, they made them to shine upon her. They made them as her treasures, as her jewels. And they made all things for the, for the, for the love of our souls, but most especially for the love of the mother. And she is, needs to be with us at all times. Hence the practice that we tell all Catholics. Why do we tell you? Make sure you have a scapular at all times. Whoever dies wearing the scapular will never lose his soul. Because who dies wearing the scapular belongs to Mary. And who dies wearing the scapular and belonging to Mary cannot go to any other place than where her son is, which is the kingdom of heaven. And the same thing with the rosary. Don't just say the rosary every day. Make sure the rosary is always on your person. 
We always say, have that scapular and the rosary, the scapular and the rosary. We don't have the scapular and the rosary only at the very end. You don't take your scapular and hang it on your shelf until you get the day, tomorrow I'm going to die, I'll put my scapular on tomorrow. You don't know the day that you're going to die. You know not the day or the hour we're going to meet our Lord Jesus Christ, the judge. But if we always are with Mary, and our food is always coming from her hands, and we're always inside of her arms, and she's not only there for us when we're in the most grave need, the great trouble we have with St. Anthony, who was a great saint, but the trouble we have with St. Anthony is that no one ever heard of him until they lose something. When they lose something, they know about St. Anthony. When they don't lose something, they don't know who have never heard who St. Anthony was. We must recognize with our mother, it cannot be like that. The mother must be in our life always. How can we have joy? How can we have food? How can we have breath in our life? How can we have a home? A home is where the mother is. The food that is good for our soul, the food that is good for our bodies, is the food given to us by our mothers. And when there is the smallest wound, when there is the smallest cut, when there is a bruise on the elbow, even one you can't see, what do you do? You take it to the mother. Have the habit of taking every trouble to the mother, and every food to the mother, and every day to the mother. And then whenever the final day comes, when the final day comes, and the great attack of the devil comes, and the great lie comes, we'll call upon our Holy Mother. And because we love the truth, which is her son, and because we speak to her often and every day, because we keep her scapular around us as an as a, as a, a armor to protect us, and because we keep her holy rosary, and because we love her with our hearts and we speak to her every day, we have nothing to fear when the devil comes with his great and final attack. That attack will be easily crushed by the heel of the serpent. So remember our Holy Mother is not only there to protect us and be our, our succor and our defense and our protection in the most grave of needs. She's there for everything, absolutely everything at every moment. Therefore, let's make sure that each day we lift our hearts to God and we always communicate to Him through the heart and mouth of our mother. Because when she speaks to our Lord, she gets what she wants. So let's speak to our Lord through our mother. Let's love Christ through our mother. And remember also in our age, the love of mother is so important, more than it ever has been. Because we are in an age that hates motherhood more than any other age. And the reason is quite simple. We're in the age where the mother is going to destroy Satan. And Satan is terrified of mothers at all times. But he's especially terrified of mothers now. Those who will be mothers now participate in the motherhood of, our, of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And they participate in the crushing of the head of the serpent. And when they devote their lives, when girls devote their lives to being mother. When you devote their life to being mother, they're devoting their lives to crushing the head of the serpent. That is the best way a girl can be a warrior. She is a warrior by being a mother. And that we need mothers. Mothers are so essential to every aspect of life. And that mothers are the means, the primary means, that God uses to destroy the Satan. And so, it's of a great confidence in our Holy Mother and call upon her not only the greatest need, but all need, and ask her to teach us to love the truth, not only to know it as our enemies do, but to love the truth and have a deep and deep and most deep love of the truth that we might be protected in the time of attack of the enemy. Glory to God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost.